Hi, we're at the Broom Street Gallery at an exhibition of Layla Love, and we are going to look at some of, more of her photography. And we're lucky today because Layla is here. The artist is here. Layla Love, there she is. Hello. It's Hi. So beautiful to see you. Yep, all the way from California. Yes, for right now. But I'm right. always traveling. So right, right. Okay, no so. Place that's home. Oh, no place is home, right? No <laughs> place is home. Okay, so we missed this one here. Tell us, this looks like a, a portrait of Frida Kahlo. Yes. Sandwiched with a uh, ocean scape or a sandwiched with a negative of an ocean, and then a negative is a woman as a angel, a dark angel and a light angel. Because right. I feel Frida was drawn between these very very dark spaces and these very mm -hmm. sacred illuminating light spaces, and uh, she's such a prolific pioneer of the dreamscape of the lucid dreaming of the ability to transcend and transform through art and creative transformation really like how do you transcend your body your limitations whatever pain and sorrow you have and take raw emotion and transform it into something greater than what it is so the angels that were drawn between and the ocean to wash you clean and mm. keep you afloat. You're either floating or drowning. So it's there's both mm -hmm. sides to each. Mm -hmm. The light and the dark, the floating, the drowning. Is but, this is this the first time this photograph has been exhibited? Um, this is the second time. I did a collaborative show with Giorgio Kazu, who's uh, an okay. Italian painter. Right. And so we were working on collaborative pieces. We had begun painting and photographing together in Australia and then moved on to do shows here. In right. New York. Is he the one you collaborated on with your book? With, with the book, yeah, with that book. Right, the I book you showed me. Mm -hmm. Right, which is beautiful. And that book has the title of it. It has a great title. What, what Lucid was Dreaming Harvest Season for the Soul. Fantastic. So, okay. yeah, I think that people have had enough tragedy and intenseness, and they need things to look at that are really going to inspire some aliveness from within, some dreaming, some open space that allows you to have grace under fire because the world's a lot of pressure. So. Right, well, we could certainly use that. <laughs> yeah. okay. Thank you for sharing. Oh, yes. Now, I did we get to, did we talk about these over here? I, I don't think so. Okay, let's take a look over here. These are large. These are 40 by 60. So that's pretty big for traditional photographic methods or, or a, a print method of any type that's enormous that's gigantic but they look beautiful the scale is beautiful um, tell us about uh, what is the title of this work this one is earth angels rising okay and, uh, it's a woman Oops. many people think it's a statue but it's a person she's alive oh wow we climbed up on a roof 
over the city skyline. And again, it's a, another waiting time, like waiting for the sky to part in the right way. To right. Get some sort of symmetry. But yeah, I like working with other artists. She's a prolific writer. And so we came together to make this. But I mean, what it's really saying is that we're all earth angels, that we're all here with possible missions to be kinder to each other, more loving, more in service. So it's just about the silver lining. So how did you get her to have the wing? If she's alive, she's live, right? She's alive. So did, was she wearing something, or was um, how did was she? How did she become a winged angel? Uh, we, um, my friend, who's a dancer, creates wings. She oh. makes even full body wings. I have wow. pictures of a woman. This woman Kai is a bird. But uh, she she creates wings, so we got large wings made of feathers, and then I just shot through the sunlight on traditional film. Everything oh, in wow. the show is done on negatives rather than digitals. Right, and so she became a silhouette in the process. Yes, that's great. Against the right is so bright right. behind her that she just became this cool shape which looks mythic or Greek in origin or like uh, classical Greek sculpture. Um, I'm thinking of the winged victory in, in the Louvre. <laughs> it's the sculpture I'm thinking of. Yeah, I mean, I love that. I love sculptures. I love sculptures. So to create, create something of sculpture from a living being, mm -hmm. you know, that's what photography does. It frees frames, frees frames your attention. That's right. Okay, so this other companion, same scale, is... Now, is this one sandwiched also, or is this a straight negative? This is a straight negative. Okay. And this is a straight negative. Oh, wow. You know, it looks like it might have been a uh, composite, but it's not. So these two are similar in your approach. Yes. Artistic approach. Okay, nice. So this is... Looks like, did you say Hawaii or Australia? Was it? No, this one is in Hawaii. Hawaii. This is in Maui. And okay, I beautiful. Figure, you know, if people can't be at the beach in the most beautiful place in the world, they should at least right. have it to, to view in their home, you know. Right. The ocean is the best thing on earth. Oh, I love the ocean. And this was a particular, it's a decisive moment when the second wave comes through. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is volcanic rock in the foreground. What time of day is this? Dawn? Is it evening? It's evening. It's evening sunset time. Okay. Right, right, and it's black and white. Right. Now, what made you decide to print this in black and white as opposed to color? Oh, it's a black and white negative. So, okay, that makes sense. Oh, okay. So, right, right. But this this one over here, you we were shooting in color for, for this, of course, with the sky and the the sunset. Although that could look fantastic in, as black and white. It, it almost is a black and white shot. Right. Sometimes subtlety is so. Okay. Great. Well, did we miss anything? Did we cover everything? Um, Maybe some of one left. you tell us about. Is, is there anything else you a uh, photo you'd like to show us or talk about? Um, we're looking at this blue one right now. With it, it looks like you zoomed. Yeah. To the lens slow, while you slow exposure. Okay. Yeah. I was in New Zealand working on rainforest restoration work. Okay. Um, so I wanted to do a series of nature to just honor the space and time. Um, but it's also got the darker element when you're, I was traveling by myself and I felt sort of scared and you're in a new place and you're alone and it's getting dark and so that right. it was a reflection of that right. sort of 
scary woods feeling, but also the beauty and enchantment. But sometimes you, you're both allured and hesitant at once. Yeah, it's interesting for me. It sort of has a primordial feel, or a, like um, the origins of the universe, or something that kind of a feeling, which is perhaps a lonely moment as well. Very cool. Okay. And then this one over here, we didn't talk about this double portrait. This. Oh uh, yes. This is a collaborative piece with a visionary artist, Alex Gray. Um, he's a world-renowned pioneer, I would say, is the Salvador Dali of this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an infrared image of a wonderful woman playing the violin. I was shooting a, a series of women playing violins in different scapes. It's um, a great subject. I like how you dropped her out. She's like a negative silhouette. Yeah. The light being. This this okay. picture is all about energy okay. and fractal lines and right. the way that it comes together. The only thing that's left is the heart. Her heart. Oh, great. <laughs> Was that accidental or did that just come out like that or did you kind of put um, that? Well, I knew it was going to be infrared and negative so I knew if I put, like she was wearing dark and then this was light, so it was going to come out in reverse. So I, I knew in advance that if I put a light heart, it would work. I mean, but I didn't know how it would turn out. You never know exactly how it's right. going to turn out. Right, that's, that's, right, right. The image is developed. That's right. Now, so, this, um, when you're printing color, are you using one of the big machines, or? Um, sometimes in a dark room and so you're actually doing color work in the dark room in trays? Yeah, there's a lab that I have worked at down in Santa Barbara called Spectrum, and they still do color in black and white. Color outside of that huge drum machine. Yeah. Those are, that's the only color thing I've ever worked on, but I didn't even know that they... I mean, they, it's still complicated. Printing in right. color is complicated. No yeah. There's so many variables, and you need a thousand test prints, but I really... I trained meticulously. I started shooting when I was seven, and then by the time I was 12, I was in the dark room probably for four hours a day. Right. Like it was my. But color, that, I mean, how many trays? Is I it mean, the. That's how I got through college. I had a job at Spectrum Photo. Oh. I had to be in there doing their magazine work. Like well, that was great experience. Teaching. That's how I learned to dye. Oh, wow. And everything is really color tint there. Okay. So it was an apprenticeship, you know, really. Yeah. And that's what I've always seeked out my whole life. Uh -huh. I worked with Lisa Metzger when I was 12. I really kept harassing her over and over again. I fell in love with Sally Mann's work. That's the first work I ever saw. Wow, great. So, I have an ode and respect to all the brilliant photographers and image makers and media makers. I really think it's, life is here for us to express and to share and to honor. So, well, it's great that all that experience, you were able to use all that and for your own work. So that's... It's been, a, it's been definitely my greatest love affair. Like I forfeited having a family or a relationship. I've been celibate for a number of years. Like just really with, with art and in love with art and what you can create and then what meaning you can create behind that and how you can give back to that and be of service. I would want to just be doing service work. Like I was for six years at orphanages doing a lot of stuff and then I found if I came out into the world and shared more that I would be able to give back more. So it's been a decision of that nature. Well, well, thank you so much for giving us a tour of your work and for telling us so many great stories. Thank you. It's very inspiring. It's thank pleasure. you very much. So the show is up for a few more days, right? And then Yeah, it's up till March 24th. So um, four more days. Broom Street Gallery. Broom Street Gallery. In Soho. It's between Worcester and West Broadway. Right. And um, it's a lovely space. There's also some 
beautiful Warhols and Picassos and right. Let's let's things. just take one quick look to show what else the gallery has available. There are there's Warhol, right? Yeah, there's Warhol. There's also downstairs. There's a whole other section of Picassos, Robin Wood. So there's a downstairs. Here's a Mick Jagger Warhol. Very nice. Yeah, Signed. Looks like it's number 90 out of an edition of 250. Signed by Andy Warhol and Mick Jagger. Very cool. This is Superman. I worked with Ronnie Catron for oh, yeah. a few years. I've met him. I know Ronnie. He's really, really nice and he's just been sweet and collaborative processes as well. Um, okay, and here we have... I say that because the Superman was his era. Oh, that was his era. Oh, yeah, yeah I see the, the diamond printing is in that one as well. He did yeah. shoes, right, with the diamond dust. Uh -huh. I remember those. This is a classic dollar sign in yellow. And then... Beautiful. And here we have some pieces just one up today. It's an ever-changing sort of space. Yeah. Downstairs I, are the Picasso's and okay. Shepherd Fairy as well, which is really okay, right. some people I, I love. Okay, this artist, do we know who this is? <laughs> who is this, this artist? Excuse me? Who is this artist? That's from New York School, Kevin Baker. Huh. Kevin Baker. Kevin. Was it? Well, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> the six degrees of Kevin Bacon have come back. Okay, now here we have a minimal. We have no. That's not. That's we're just kidding about this. Great here. Okay, we have Christopher Wool. Wow. Christopher Wool and Ratna. So it's a good, good variety of art. This artist is, who is this one here? This Retina. Ret Retina. Yeah, he's an L.A. street artist. Wow. But he's along with John Park and Hans C. And wow, I, uh, cool. Last year was the first time I had a show with those sorts of artists. Okay. And the brass sculpture is, do we know who this artist is? Yeah, this one is... Um, on its way out of the gallery to a place in Turkey, but it is by... We'll find out later. <laughs> okay. Maybe just stop by the gallery and ask yourself. Ask about the <laughs> French horn sculpture. It also has a soprano saxophone. And water comes out through it. Oh, it's a, it's a water? It's a fountain? Yep. Oh. And, uh, too, if, if um, we're gone from here, you can check on lovephotography.org slash collections. That's, that's how they can look online if they want to see the virtual gallery. Okay, say that again for in case someone missed it. Can you repeat? Yeah, that? sure. It's Love Photography, L-O-V-E. And this is you? you? Yeah, okay. I have all the collection there. Okay. Lovephotography.org. And then slash collections. <laughs> okay, fantastic. For those of you in the virtual world, I hope you enjoy your experience. Okay, well, we've had a lovely tour today with Layla Love. I'm so glad I got to meet her. And um, thank you very much. Thank you so much as okay. well. Okay, all right. Bye. Bye.